You're listening to Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN, on the Fresh Radio Network. Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN, with Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day. Today we'll take a couple calls, but first we're going to bust some computer myths. My mom, God rest her soul, was quite possibly the worst information disseminator I have ever met. Every time she got an email from one of her email buddies with some silly computer superstition, she'd accept it as the truth without question, and she'd forward it to hundreds of her goofy friends. They'd forward it on to their goofy friends and so on, and before you know it, you had a world of goofy believing all these false rumors. That's the danger of the Internet, folks. Uncontrolled, unmonitored, unverified silliness. But that's where I come in. I am the computer myth buster, people. Let's start with my favorite myth, the myth that if you have a computer problem, any problem at all, it doesn't matter, just run a defrag and that'll fix it. What kind of idiotic goofball started that one? And better yet, what problem did he have that a defrag actually fixed? I know it was a man who started this rumor. I just know it because men think they know everything, but, but I, I digress. So let's talk about defragmenting. What is defragmenting? Defragmenting occurs when your Windows operating system cannot allocate enough disk space to store a complete file as a single unit of data. So it breaks the file up, putting parts of it in gaps between other files all over the hard drive wherever space is available. Theoretically, for the best performance, it's better to store a file contiguously, they call it, or as one continuous stream of data on a hard drive. But often that's not possible due to the way hard drives work. Little gaps exist all over the hard drive because they once held a file that you deleted at some point or because the operating system allocated XX space for a file in the first place that it didn't need. So you've got a hard drive with little blocks of data all over the place. It's easier to describe this with an example. So you want to save a digital photograph of your dog killer to your computer. Your hard drive gets a notice that it needs to put this file somewhere. So here's kind of how that would go. Hey, hard drive, this schmuck wants to save this stupid 5 megabyte picture of some dog. You got any room down there? 5 megabytes? You're killing me here. Why so big? Compress it and let the processor do all the work. I'm tired and I have a break coming up. The user doesn't know how to compress it, so just shut up. Stop wasting time and put this file somewhere. Okay, okay, fine. Hang on a second. Uh, let me find some room somewhere. I'll check the file allocation table. Okay, yeah. I've got some room here between Solitaire and, uh, let's see, yes, a video of some Hooters chick. Oh, wait a minute. Let me have a look-see of this. Mm. Let's go. Hurry up. You're making me look bad. Fine, 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 Mr. Hurry Up over here. Look, if you don't hurry up, this user will run a defrag. No! No defrag, please. That hurts. Okay, I'll stick a piece of the dog between this here video driver and the address book. Okay, it's safe. You happy now? No defrag, please! Defragmentation is a process that reduces the amount of fragmentation in file systems. It does this by physically organizing the contents of the disk to store those pieces of each file closer together and contiguously. It also attempts to create larger regions of free space when it's done using a process called compaction to temporarily avoid future fragmentation. You can't never... Avoid fragmentation. It's just the nature of the beast. But the real truth here is that the difference in performance after a defrag is typically not noticeable, with very few exceptions. Unless you're defragging something complex like a database, or if you're a systems administrator and uh, you're defragging a file server. But for the home computer, you will rarely notice a difference in performance after a defrag. I've seen people defrag their computers once a day, and it's just ridiculous to do that. You're really not getting any benefit out of that. The NTFS file system was actually engineered to run well while fragmented, and most new versions of Windows do a pretty adequate defrag behind the scenes when necessary. As a matter of fact, defragmenting is stressful to a hard drive, and if you do it too often, you can actually decrease the life of your hard drive. So instead of fixing your problem, a defrag may have just made a more expensive one. More myth-busting coming up soon. Isn't this fun? Well, let's take a call. Brandon, you're on the air with Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN. Tell me about all your troubles. Hi, Chucky. This is Brandon. I'm a first-time caller, and I love your podcast. And that's a really a hot picture of you on your website. Uh, why is it almost every Brandon I talk to is gay? Okay, Brandon, what's going on? 
Well, my computer was running a little slow, so I am... Don't be mad. I defragmented. <sighs> and just like you said, it didn't help one bit. So I called my computer manufacturer's technical support to see if they could help me. They charged me $79, and I could barely understand what they were saying. Must have been some little turd in a third world country. Anyways, the computer is still slow, and I can't find my pictures anywhere. Can you help me? Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Did they have you do a system recovery? Yes, that's right. How did you know? Can you see me? Is my webcam on? How do I look? Damn that company. That's the third time this week they've had someone run a recovery without warning them that it would erase everything on their hard drive. Ex excuse me? Did you just say that everything on my hard drive was erased? The pictures of me and my partner in Key West? The video of my dancing at Cold Keg? Wait. My kitty cat dress up party all gone? Yep, gone. <laughs> That's it. This has to change. I'm calling them right now. Joe, Joe, give me that number. I'm going straight to the top, and together we are going to change the way technical support does business. You got it? Let me know, let me know when it's ringing. For years now, these big companies have outsourced their technical support inbound calls to some telemarketing company in a third world country that knows next to nothing. This has got to end. Let's bring tech support jobs back to America. Train people to fix problems, not to make things worse. Outsourcing, in my opinion, should be against the law. It's the root cause of the systematic destruction of America. You got them? Good. Hello. Technical support. My name is Bobby. Can I be of helping to you? Who am I talking to? What's your name? Booby? That's Bobby, not Booby. What can I be doing for you today? Where are you? That is not information I can be sharing with you. Can I have your serial number, please? Why can't you tell me where you are? India? Pakistan? Mars? Technical support will cost you $79 for this incident. We do take all major credit cards. I will need your serial number to get started. What? 79 bucks so you can tell me to reload my system? Would you, if I did that, would you at least warn me that reloading my system would erase everything on my hard drive? <laughs> Listen, Booby, bump me up to your manager. We're not getting anywhere here. One moment, please. This is ridiculous. Brandon's problem could have been a virus, a program that maybe went a little nuts, maybe a bad stick of memory. There's no reason some schmuck should charge people $79 or more to destroy someone's memories and not fix the problem. Today is the day we fix this. Hello? How can I help you today? Is this the manager? This is the supervisor. What's your name, young fella? My name is Machu. Do you have a serial number? Tell me something, Machu. Does anyone there know how to fix computers, or are you reading from a script on your computer? We have commonly accepted procedures for fixing computers, but to start, I will need your serial number. And Machu, is it commonly accepted to take the easy way out and advise a customer to reload the operating system rather than correctly diagnose and fix the problem? All I am needing is the serial number. Please do not be asking me any further questions without your serial number. You're a miserable little man with a small wee-wee, aren't you, Matthew? You don't have the courage to tell me the truth, do you? You know nothing about fixing computers, and your sad little company is getting paid about a buck an hour by a large American company that doesn't really care about its customers, right? You read everything off a computer screen and don't give a crap what happens as long as you can leave work, drive your little smart car, and buy your mommy cow dung with the three rupees a week you earn ruining people's lives. Am I right? Mother of all frackers, you Americans think you know everything. You drive the big hammers, all your women are stupid blondes with large fake breasts. You eat sacred cows. Your mother stupid who cares about your pictures of large fake breasts. <clears throat> now please, give me your damned serial number and a credit card, please. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. You feel better now, don't you, Matthew? Matthew? I guess we lost him. Mm, he sounded hot. Listen, before you call these big company tech support numbers, stop at a local small store in your area and talk to them about your options. My company, Computer Care Clinic, offers a free no-obligation diagnosis. We would have told Brandon what was really wrong, how to fix it, and all his personal photos from Key West or whatever would have been saved. More tips, tricks, and advice available on our website at ComputerCareClinic.com or become a fan on our Facebook page. Search for Computer Care Clinic. This is Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN, with Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day. Goodbye. Goodbye.